Hi, uh, welcome to the After Show video, Francis von Zernick's head full of useless information about movies. Uh, I'm Francis von Zernick, and this is our guest, I, uh, William Lustig. And I, it's a very special uh, uh, show, These, this is two-parter, this is part one of two. Um, and for the first time doing the show, um, I have a, we have a guest that has made a picture that is in my uh, uh, top ten movies of most influential movies. A great a masterpiece called Maniac. Uh, where you've directed many other movies, but you directed this very, very, very important movie to me. And to have you on here because of that is, is like an honor. Well, it's... I, uh, um, it's odd because I made the film when I was 24 years old. I know you did that. It's and, important uh, to make your first movie. Well, it wasn't your first movie, but it was important to make your first movie before you tour. You know. Yeah. Uh, well, it was. I wasn't really thinking about you know that it was important to do it. I realized in I, retrospect. I, yeah. In retrospect, it was, but um, and uh, because you see what's magical about that time, is um, is that you're going on instincts. You haven't had the time to be put through. Uh, the uh, bureaucracy of the entertainment business, right? Where and so I wasn't filtering myself. So Maniac and Vigilante, uh, I consider that to a great be, movie. I consider to be uh, me unfiltered. But that's the way. That's when you have your fire and you're working on all the things that have accumulated in your mind about making movies, and it just comes out. And you, 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 you don't have. You're not jaded. You're not anything. You just. I'm going to do this because this is the way I see it. And gonna, you well, know. It's very exciting. You don't know what you don't know. Exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And, uh, and which is what's great about it because, you know, I never. I. I, I was learning the craft. Um, it was sort of my graduate school. Uh -huh. And so I, I. I really, you know, uh, was learning, uh, and so I was going, on instincts. Some right. Some wrong. And, uh, and that's what I think makes the most interesting films. That's why I always look at filmmakers. I think their most interesting films are usually their first or second movie. Yeah, right? absolutely. First or second, first or second movie, yeah. And uh, because that's when they're really working from within mm -hmm. and not thinking about stuff. I want to talk a little bit about, uh, and I know you're probably sick of it, but I just love Joe Spinell, the, the, the lead, the famous, great, masterful character mm -hmm. actor, but also the lead in Maniac. And, you and, and my dear friend. And your dear, well, of course, yeah, I'm sorry. Did that, I didn't mean to disrespect him. No, no, oh, my, my okay. friend. No, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. No, my friend. It was, it was more than just working with uh, an actor. It of was course. My, he was my friend and creative collaborator. Uh, 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 but you, I read, I don't know if this is true, that you worked on The Seven Ops as a PA. Yes. Which is... Uh, uh, well, I was working, what happened was I, I got I got into the Phil D'Antoni office. Oh, see? And... Uh, and uh, um, and <laughs> it was kind of funny because Philip, I, yeah, for the viewers at home, Bill Dantoni pr produced, produced Bullet, 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 The French Connection, French Connection, and, and Seven and, Ups, and Seven Ups, and, and great uh, car chases. And you have a great car chase in Vigilante, by the way, oh, with no music you. over. It. Okay, all right, yeah. But it was um, Sorry. what was what was uh, what was interesting about it was uh, there was some uh, desks there and, and phones, and I was able to use them. Uh, when I was putting together my uh, adult movies uh -huh. to give me some uh, entree into uh, facilities, equipment facilities, laboratories, right. things like that. Cause, and, 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 you know, uh, so I was kind of running my own little production, co production company out of their production company. <laughs> and, and Joe got a kick out of that. Oh, that's... Uh so we, what, what you were on the were you on the set? Of and Saturday by the way, my 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 uh, um, by the way, the guy who was the associate producer on Seven Ups, Kenny Utt. Uh huh. Yeah. Was famous. Uh, yeah. Kenny Utt. Was, uh, he went on to do Silence of the Lambs. He worked with Jonathan yeah. Demi on all yeah, the Jonathan yeah, Demi's yeah. movies. He um, he was very supportive of what I was doing. Oh, okay, and, good. Yeah. And he would actually he he was another one. It's funny how these guys who are the establishment, um, you know. They, they want to, you know, when you're young, they want to encourage you, they want to help you, they want to mentor you, you know, you, you, and I tell that to filmmakers that, you know, you know, don't be afraid, you know, they, they, these, they, these people normally aren't there, you're not a threat, and they, and they have all this knowledge that they want to impart. And you really want to be listened to, and, and, yeah. and trying to share what they, yeah, yeah. it's a part of, um, so you, you met, uh, uh, Joe on, on the 7-0. Yes. 
Um, which is one of my favorite movies. I later was, by the way, this was really incredible. I later uh, was with Joe on the set of Taxi Driver. You're kidding me! Yes. I was there at the exterior scenes at the Belmore Cafe. Uh, Belmore Cafeteria. Oh my God! When, where he talks to Peter Boyle right, and the the, the, and the, the camera, kid walks by and, and, the, they, and I was there when Scorsese was shooting that, and I was there watching the shooting of of Taxi Driver with Joe Spinell. Oh my God! And he wasn't in those scenes. No, but, but we were there. You, oh my yeah. God! Yeah. If you don't know Joe Spinell, is I'm sure you do, but uh, you, well, we're talking about Taxi Driver. In the opening uh, uh, scene of Taxi Driver, he's the one that uh, uh, introduces us to Travis. Yeah, he's, he's the, the dispatcher. The dispatcher. Um, Wait, who made up basically his dialogue? I mean, that was all that. Yeah, was. yeah. Uh, oh my God, you were there. Well, if you've seen my movie Gods Will Remain, you know that I'm a very, very big uh, Taxi Driver fan. Who is? And Paul Schrader fan. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a great movie. Yeah, it's, 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 it's one of, one of the my favorite perfect things. movies that I, I just made. moved yeah. out of the East Village. Uh huh. But my gym that I used to go to uh, was around the corner uh, from 13th Street where they did this final scene of Taxi Driver. That was where Harvey Keitel was outside. Yeah, it's 13th Street between first and at, uh, between uh, uh, third and second uh, was where. That's 13th between third and second. Yeah. That's like I used to live on Fourth. Uh, wow. Okay. Yeah. 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 I could, I don't know that. Yeah. Well, I guess when Judy Foster's walking around, it's that. Yeah. I guess you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, the photo play theater used yeah. to be on Third Avenue between Thirteenth yeah. uh, and Fourteenth. Oh my God. And um, yeah, and uh, it's so funny. The Gothic furniture place is still on the corner of Thirteenth and, and Third Avenue. The, with the unpainted furniture. Yeah. But yeah, that I know that because I've seen that movie so well. I know exactly what you're talking. Oh my. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. So what? How? What was the genesis of uh, uh, of Maniac? Did he well, the, some? Uh, uh, okay. We, Jaws. There's something about Jaws. Oh, yeah. Well, here, here's okay, what happened. Okay. I want to hear. Joe it. Spinell yeah. and I. We we developed a script about a father and son serial killers. Okay. And it was really kind of interesting. It was called Sleigh Ride. Uh huh. Um, but for one reason or another, we never. Uh, it never really came together. I don't know if we thought maybe the script didn't work. I, I really forget. But mm -hmm. um, I was I was with uh, our friend Frank Pesh, uh -huh. and I'll never forget where we were. We were I was in his car. He was driving uh, up up Eighth Avenue in New York City, and he turns to me. He goes, "What about Jaws on Land?" And it sounded so ridiculous, but I uh, but something clicked in my head that oh. And all of a sudden, I started to see a killer who was like the shark in Jaws, and uh, and that's kind of how we how it's funny how something that seems so uh, tangent tangent uh, yeah yeah tangential yeah yeah to, yeah to what you're to what to what you ultimately are making, but has this profound influence on on what you're doing. And then you open the picture on the beach. And, and, yeah yeah yeah. Um, but it's more than, and of course you already know this, but it, it, it Maniac is more than that. It's almost like, kind of, I'm, I'm being a little lofty here, but it's, to me, it's almost like it's more ex existential horror movie because we get to know this guy and we, we feel, we, we're given a, no choice but to sympathize with this guy well, because he's the... There was a, there was a happy occurrence, there was an ultimately happy occurrence Originally, the script had a detective in it who was oh, uh, yeah who was tracking him down. Yeah, and he was to be played by Jason Miller, an, an, a friend of of, of John. And, uh, and 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 one of my favorite movies. Yeah, Sorry. of course. Who is who is it? Who is, yeah. who, who doesn't feel that way? But wow. uh, Jason was supposed to play the detective, and uh, he couldn't do it for one reason or okay. another. And instead of recasting, we just decided let's X all the scenes. With the detective, so what you see, and you had enough pages after that. To uh, well, I mean, we were, you know, the 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 the, 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 the murder scenes were um, <laughs> the murder scenes yeah. <laughs> were such that uh, we could, you know, we could stretch them because the murder scenes were like like one line. Uh -huh. you know? So we never really knew how. Oh, long okay, all right. And, and the only sure. scene that remained was at the very end with Randy Jerkinson coming in the apartment. Yeah. Oh, okay. And we shot several versions of that scene. Oh, yeah. Wow. 
All right. Well, that's. Uh, I think we're out of time. But uh, uh, if you liked uh, what we're talking about, who wouldn't? Um, uh, if you're on Facebook, click on the link above, um, and uh, and listen to the uh, the podcast. And if you're on YouTube, I might have this mixed up. Click on the link below. I think I've it mixed up, but you you you'll know what to do. Um, and uh, and listen to the uh, the show, part one of uh, Franz von Zernick's head full of useless information about movies with the guest. William Lustig. All right, we'll be back next.